Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Again and Craft. This is a beautiful Sunday morning, middle of September, 15th of September to be exact. <laughs> this 8 a.m. Now, as you can see, we are back in the workshop. Right now, it's 24 degrees Celsius in here, which is the perfect weather for epoxy. We are back. We are so back. But first, can you see that? That junk, and basically junk all over the place. I can barely walk here. I need to clean this shed up. Okay, I haven't been in here all summer. Everything was just drying here, and all the paints have separated from their pigments. And yeah, everything is covered in dust, more or less. Now, the thing is, this winter, we're going to do more resin work, more woodworking. I want to work on my woodworking skills because I'm the worst at it. And I think I need to get some actual proper tools to, to have exact measurements and exact cuttings. But I digress. Um, so this video, we're going to build a table. Uh, there's a story behind this. So as you know, two months ago, I opened a little shop downtown. Uh, yeah, on the main street and uh, at the opening party there was a raffle and a lady won the raffle who is basically the guardian angel of all animals on the island her name is Sandy and she is she basically sacrificing her own life just to save animals if she can't if she if she has like 10 bucks left on her account, she's going to buy food for the stray cats rather than for herself. And she has been, she's been like, she, she opened a shelter for dogs and cats and all other animals on the island, which have been abandoned and sick. And she's been taking care of these animals since I know her. Now she won the raffle, right? And she got to me, uh, a couple of days later and she said that she would be happy to give up her she is very happy to receive a a a, a grand prize of a raffle she never had that before but she's happy to give it up to somebody else because uh, her home is always covered with pets and dogs and cats and everything gets ruined and uh, and uh, and of course she 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 don't want the piece to be ruined and anything and i was like I understand your concern, but I really want to make this table for you because she's been giving so much of her own comfort and life to, to others, and I really want to give her something back. I just, I just really feel that she, she deserves to have something really nice. Now, this was in June or July. No, it was in July. And uh, ever since I was thinking what to make, because, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, I, I didn't want to make something random. I wanted to make something extremely personal and I wanted to make it pet proof or as durable as humanly possible. So, I knew what legs I wanted to use. Oh my God, there is a mosquito. Like, Jesus Christ, man, just give me a break, please. Let, let me record this intro. Yeah. Anyway, um, sorry about that. Um, so, where was I? ADHD brain, there you go. Um, yeah, so I wanted to make her something durable. So I got the legs figured out. Uh, I'm gonna salvage it from a uh, from a other table you can buy online, but I really like that shape and the and the metal legs, and that's durable metal legs. But I was thinking on the tabletop and what to use for a tabletop. Now, if I'm gonna make a bigger table, I need to use uh, thinner pieces, and I need to use glue joints or or peg joints for it, and he, I, I made a table with glue joints, and the problem is if it's on the sun here, 
somehow the, the, the glue joints just don't stay right, even if it's done with PVA. Uh, wood just gets even more drier than it is usually, so from the 5 to 10% humidity uh, or wetness level. Wetness level. I really should start an OnlyFans and stop doing woodworking at this point. Anyhow, coffee is kicking in. <laughs> um, so it gets drier and it deforms. Um, anyhow, what I decided to do is scour through my pieces of wood and I found this block of mahogany. Now, it has a couple of things with it. As you can see, it's two different kind of wood grain and a beautiful knot in the center. Now, this knot has a, has a little crack here. I don't know if you can see it. And it's plain very roughly, as you can see. So, yeah, the planers struggled with it. And they planed this fat. But it's extremely thick. It's about... It's about 40, 48 millimeters thick, which is great because I still have some meat to plane this flat. So here's what I'm going to do, okay? Today, I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it to size. And I know I need 30 centimeters width and 40 centimeters length. So I'm going to cut off at 45. I'm going to make this angle. Oh my God, this fucking heavy. I'm going to make this angle 90 degrees, so I have the basic shape, and then I'm going to start working on the top and the bottom. I want to, I want to stabilize this knot somehow, because I don't want it to pop out. This is how the other side looks. Maybe this is what we're going to use for the top, I don't know. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to sand it flat, sand it smooth, maybe run it through my planer. I'm not sure yet, but point is we're going to make this flat and then we're going to fill the cracks with epoxy and I'm going to use a British product, a leather dye recoloring balm. You can buy it every, uh, I forgot which car store, the Halfords, I think you can buy this at Halfords in England. Uh, if you're in England, you know that. Uh, it's basically like a, a chain car parts store or car supply store. Anyway, uh, I used it before for dyeing resin black and it works. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use some black resin to fill up the cracks and gashes and then send it smooth. Afterwards, I will design a uh, picture on my laser engraver and I would like to engrave a head of a dog and the head of a cat and underneath I want to engrave thank you Sandy and then fill that with something very very nice color which actually pops uh, against the red of the mahogany which is going to be either is either going to be lime green or or fluorescent blue one of one of these it has to be so if you get if you want to if you want color to pop you get the color swatch swatch you know where the colors are uh, in a in a circle you probably saw it before and you look for the color you have and you look on the opposite end and that's gonna make that's gonna pop that's gonna contrast the color uh, yeah so that's it for this intro it's been nine minutes talking about nothing and I think it's time that I start cutting shit. Um, I will probably not record it because the tripod is in the shop. And uh, yeah, I just need to go outside and start chopping away. I'm going to make two cuts. That's simple. All right. I'll see you guys when I have an update. So this is, this is how we're going to do this video. I'm going to do something. Probably not record it because this place is a shithole right now. It's a fucking mess. And... Uh, I'm just happy I can start working on something. I'm going to do something and pause, do an update to tell you how it went, and then we're going to move on. All right, let's go. All right, so 
I cut the edges off and I ran it through the planer and I realized when I ran it through the planer I tore a little bit out here but even worse when I ran through the planer two three times it actually cracked the knot like this so I'm gonna stop doing the planing and I am going to put some epoxy on it right now to stabilize it before I continue anything. Oh, oh, early morning sneeze, that's the best. Anyway, um, so that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna put some silicone around here. I'm gonna sellotape up the bottom and I'm gonna pour some epoxy in here. So for that, I'm gonna need my trusty old and crusty silicone gun and let's hope that this silicone didn't cure into the tube over the summer and start pulling on your silicone like this <laughs> and the whole thing comes out like that it means that it's <laughs> most probably cured into the tub tube it's still coming though yeah. well it's happy to see me, let's just say that. Anyway. <laughs> Fuck. So, let's tape this fucker up. And I'm using generic ass cellar tape. You can use Tyvek tape, you can use packing tape, nobody cares. It has to be plastic, that's the point. It has to have enough glue on it to hold. <laughs> That's really it. I don't want it to seep out too much. It can seep out. I'm going to sand it anyway. I have, I have hours of sanding to go on this bad boy. But let's just minimize the damage. It's probably going to seep out because the surface is not flat and and it's dusty and you should remove the dust before you tape it up just for prep, proper adhesion and everything but I just don't care at this point because there's just so much more so much more work to do on this piece of wood ah anyway I'm glad I'm back doing woodworking stuff I love the smell of wood and I love woodworking and I missed it dearly over the summer but finally I am back. Okay, so I'm worried about this edge, but I will probably just taper it in when it's done. This is going to be the top, so I'm just going to do like a 45 angle, 45 degree angle taper on, on the edges, and I can save this. Anyway. Oh, I got the squishy stuff out. Yuck. Okay, so silicone. Let's build a dam. Let's build a wall. And make Agina great again. Why are you guys gonna have the election in the United States soon? It's gonna be a funky shit show to watch. I should probably do a live react watching the elections. He is the Eastern European boy trying to figure out why are you voting for clowns and believing that they are any of them want the best for you. Anyhow, that's enough anarchist talk for the morning. I'm just gonna make sure, okay, some more there. Wear gloves. Especially when you're working with silicone, because it's a nightmare to remove. <sighs> do as I do, not as I say. Okay, now, this is the dam. And this is a damn good dam. Okay, now, we are going to leave it as it is for now. And I need it to cure and settle for a little bit. And then I'm going to mix up some resin with the leather dye. Or leather, what is it? What the hell is this? Recoloring balm. What is it made of? It is made of 
They're obviously not gonna tell you because they don't want you to make this at home. But I swear to God, it's charcoal and some carrying material. It's like that. Some pigments and some gel. Anyway, I'm gonna mix that with silicone, uh, mix that with resin. I'm gonna pour it in. And my sh little shop assistant is climbing the tree. Let's just take a peek what he's doing. Benny? What you up to, buddy boy? Oh, you're checking the pomegranates. Are they ready yet for the harvest? No? He wants breakfast. He wants breakfast. If I don't give him breakfast, he's gonna find some of his own. Anyway, I'll see you guys when I'm there. Holy shit, guys, I'm such an idiot. Um, so basically, I send it the whole thing down and i managed to get a pretty good result on it i still need to super glue some holes over there and i'm already engraving what i designed on it i'm so sorry uh this morning was a great morning as you can see my hair is still like a mess uh but anyway let's get let, let me show you what so this is what i designed i wrote some text saying thank you sandy and I got some uh, I got some vector graphics from the net, which I put on it. And uh, this is how it looks. This is what we're gonna get engraved on it. I'm running it three thousand uh, millimeter per minute, so very slow and very deep, because I want to make sure that it's gonna be deep enough, so that I can fill it with resin and send it back. And if it sucks, you know, if it doesn't work out, I can still I still have material to to work through. Um, the machine says it's gonna take about hour and forty minutes to get through, which is great because now I can uh, prepare some. What can I prepare? I need to finish my coffee. Anyway, I get back to you guys when I have something to report. I'm so sorry I, you guys missed the sanding part, but imagine, I can, I can show you how it was. It was like this. I was moving the sander up and down, like so, extremely slow, right, with a 40 grit paper. You can imagine the background noise. That was pretty much it, okay? i done that for about two hours. <laughs> anyway, I update you guys when, you, when I have something, all right? All right, quick update. So I did the super glue trick to fill up the cavities. And, and I went to town with the laser. And I think I managed to cut like two mil deep into it. So now I'm going to go upstairs, mix some, some jewel casting resin, put some blue pigment in it, and fill this boy for the inlay let's go i'm just gonna let you know when it's done and i'm gonna show you how it is okay so update on the resin mixing i mixed up turkis some of my mica and i added some white to the mix like so because when you add white to the mix it just lightens up the color a little bit somehow I don't know what I done, but it works. So the colors didn't get darker, they just got lighter. Which is neat. So I'm just gonna pour it in there. I don't have my tripod with me, nor my mic. So No, I was joking, we're gonna do this together. Even if I have to do a hand holdy thingy. I'm just gonna drench this pussy here. And the dog as well. You know. I think I made enough. It should be enough. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Okay, just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna make sure that the juice is covering the entire pussy. And also the whole puppy. 
like so. All right. And now I'm going to turn it around because, you know, I'm just going to try to level it out. Anyway, I'm going to do that off camera because I need both of my hands for it and I don't want the whole thing to flood that way. So see you in then. See you in a minute. So it's mostly leveled out. Um, the mic is staying in the grooves. Everything has started to sink and level out. So everything is looking great. Uh, I'm very happy with it. We wait for this to completely cure. Then we're going to sand it off. Um, I'm going to finish it up, put some bolts in the bottom and finish up the edge somehow. I don't know how yet, but yeah, we are almost there. This table is almost complete. Yee -hee. All right, so we're done with the sanding, and this is how she looks. Let me show you. Ta-da! Okay. So now I'm gonna clean it up. And while I was sanding, I was thinking, what finish should I apply on it? And this is gonna be in a household where a lot of cats and a lot of dogs are obviously <clears throat> because Sandy is the guardian angel of them and they live with her so this is a very durable wood but also the finish has to be extremely durable so we can go we can go about it two ways I can use an extremely hard exterior oil on it or I can varnish it And uh, these are my two options now. If I varnish it, I have to go several layers. Hmm, I'm not sure. But then again, if it gets damaged, the whole thing has to be sent it down and, and completely redone. So actually, I need to clean off this table a little bit. from the dust <laughs> all right so I think I'm gonna varnish it That's what we're gonna do. So, put this rack here, try to get the clean side of it. And first I'm gonna completely varnish the bottom. And then I'm gonna completely varnish the top. So, let the alcohol evaporate. And I'm gonna do three coats of varnish on the bottom, same between the coats. And then three coats of varnish on the top, same between the coats. Uh, not gonna record that you know how it is spray bottle goes like this sandpaper goes like this <laughs> all right i'll catch you guys when it's done did you seriously think i'm gonna do this without you of course not so i got myself my everyday acrylic varnish and this is the matte oh <laughs> and this is the gloss okay lovely packaging i just love it so on the bottom it says gloss, gloss, and uh, matte. We're gonna shake up the gloss. All right. Uh, so it might be down. All right.
Get that? Okay, let's go. Let's do this. You guys ready? And then turn. Make sure that I have covered this edge as well. Lovely. All right, this is coat number one. I'm going to do three more. Hey, gang, quickly checking in. I have made the insets for the for the screws and i also made four insets for the other four screw heads this is going to be the legs and i just replicated this was the original piece piece of mdf so i replicated that copied that onto that piece and now i'm gonna screw it together so the deed is done you guys ready to see how it is let me show you there we go I'm trying to get you a good angle. There you go, this is the good angle. So what do you guys think? Is a win or a loss? It's really neat. It's still a little bit. No, it's actually, I can touch it. Yeah, so it has a bunch of varnish on it. So it's going to be cat and dog and everything proof. And it has this fancy little legs on it. And it's really solid, really stable, and really heavy. So this is everything proof. I really hope Sandy's gonna like it. I dropped her a text message this morning to come and come and meet me because it's important. But she's treating the dogs and cats and and uh, and uh, and uh, what you call it, uh, the pet sanctuary all day. So I hope she finds a minute in her schedule to come by and and uh, receive her table. Um, Anyway, uh, this was a very, very fun experiment and a very, very fun project. I hope you guys got something out of this video. If you want to support the channel, you can do it on buymeacoffee.com or buying something from my web shop. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.